hopefully a few more people are going to join in uh, in the next few minutes. Welcome everybody to today's Applying Ethology webinar and as usual uh, to housekeeping rules at the very beginning. If you have any questions regarding the content of the talk, feel free to put them into the Zoom chat, uh, which will uh, which will uh, the questions will, will be asked at the very end of the talk. Um, and when you join in, or if you're attending, please double check whether your microphone is muted and whether your uh, video is off to avoid any disturbances during the presentation. Today, it's my great pleasure to introduce you uh, our, our current speaker, Vito Ferreira. He's currently a PhD student uh, at uh, ISA Lille and University of Tours. And he is specifically interested in animal behavior and cognition in general, and will today talk about his work on personality and cognition in free-range chickens. So, uh, Vito, the stage is yours, and you're ready Thank to go. Thank you. Are you all listening to me right now? So, um, yeah, I would like to thank you, the team uh, from this Slack group, for for allowing us to present our, our research in in this environment, or in this friendly environment. Environment. So, um, um, the title of my presentation today is Why Did the Chicken Cross the Range? The Personality and Cognition of Free Range Chickens. So, this work is done in collaboration with Isalil in Rae, the University of Toulouse, Christian Chicken. And um, so, let's start. Oh, so, the, I start with this quick video. Is a chicken crossing a road? So maybe we all have already faced in this situation where um, a chicken crossed our path, and we ask, we ask ourselves why this animal is here, why why this animal, is, what this animal is doing here, and why this animal is so far from its barn. So well, let me say that this is a situation that we currently ask. The, the, we currently have questions about this type of situations in current systems. Because um, in the free range systems, uh, free range uh, system, there is a lot of variability in the use of the of the range. Not all chickens will use the the outside area that we call the range the same way. There are studies showing that there are 33 to 87 percent of animals that will use the range, so there is great variability. And uh, some studies focused on to understand why. The, why there is this variability. They focus on external factors, so um, factors related to environment. We know, for example, that in different periods of the day, for example, in the sunrise, before the sunrise or before the sunset, the, the individuals, we, we use the range more. We, know, we also know that in different seasons, for example, in the summer compared to the winter, um, chickens will, will go out more. And uh, we also know that the, the cover, the tree cover is important for chickens to feel, to feel protected. And um, they, they, they are more willing to go out with, if, if there's trees in the, in the range compared to a, a range that, that does not have, that doesn't have a trace. So another, other studies were interested in internal factors, so factors related to the individual. So we know, for example, that um, uh, females use the range less compared to males. We also know that there may be an influence of the, um, the age of the individuals. Older, older chickens will use the range more compared to younger, younger ones. And we also know that there may be, a, a, there may be an influence of the strain um, white strains are known to be more more fearful, so this compared to brown brown uh, strains. So um, even with uh, we 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 rear chickens in the, in a good environment during the the good season, 
we offer them trees to, to, to in the range and use a good strain to, 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 during the rearing period. Um, there's always this variability. There's always individuals that will go out only a few, they, they, they will do only a few visits to the range. And there are also individuals that make uh, much more visits to the range. So there are recent studies that were interested in these individual differences in the range use at the individual level. So we know, for example, that low uh, rangers, those individuals that do, do few visits to the range, are, are more fearful in new environments. During a open field test, they, they more, more time to, to step. And we also know that low rangers are more stressed when manipulated uh, during a manual restraint compared to high rangers, those, those individuals that, may, that do many visits to the range. So we can already see that there is a link between fear and range use. But what about uh, other behavioral traits? For example, in, in multiple uh, species of birds, we know that these individuals have what we call a exploratory trait. We will have a continuum of, of uh, exploration. We will have the, those individuals that are hardly explorative and individuals that are less explorative. And when this exploration is stable over time and in different situations, let's say an individual um, uh, are, are, is tested in a period A, and um, in some weeks, uh, years, some days later, this individual is retested in this situation. If this, the, this individual show an instability of, of the, the exploration of the explorative behavior, we can then say it uh, has a, a personality trait. So um, although uh, the number of chickens reared all over the world, we don't know, we don't have much knowledge about whether they have a exploratory trait, whether they have personality. So this is history, it's still an open question. Um, we also know that exploratory trait may modulate the way uh, in, in which individuals will interact, process, and memorize information from uh, its environment, therefore its cognition. Um, for some species, there's a positive link between exploration and learning, for example. But for other species, the, the link is uh, inverse. So, uh, for example, for uh, jungle fowl um, hands, the less explorative hands are better in learning, during, during learning tasks. Um, this, um, this will depend also, this relationship between um, exploration and learning will also depend on the complexity of the task. When the task is, uh, is simple, we do, we do not find many differences between highly and less sportive individuals. However, when the task is more complex, uh, that, that is uh, when we find this, the, these differences. So um, there is only one study focusing on laying hands, in free range laying hands, that they show uh, a positive link between range use and learning. So the individuals that, um, that range they use, uh, use the range more, sorry, were, were those that were better at that learning. However, the links between range use and cognition remain largely unknown. So this is the, uh, these are the axes of my research. Um, the first, the first ask is to understand, is to investigate whether the range use can be considered a exploratory trait, whether, whether it can, can, we can say that chickens have personality. And the second axis is um, the relationship between this exploratory trait and cognitive abilities. Um, can we uh, see the same pattern of, of simple tasks that doesn't show any difference between groups and complex tasks showing differences between groups. So this is the second act of, of my research. So uh, general methodology now, before, before I jump into the experience I did. So we used for the whole experiences, the naked neck strain. So these individuals arrive at the, uh, the barn at the, the one day of age. And they spend a, the, a whole month within this environment, within this control environment. They have food, they have water, 
uh, the temperature, the, the luminosity is controlled, everything is controlled during this first month of life. So we used five uh, flocks of, of uh, two, 200 male, male chickens and between uh, 60 and um, 120 individuals were identified before range access. So here we, we, we have the photo, a, a figure of individuals identified. Um, and uh, during the 35 and uh, 36 days of age, individuals will then have access to the range. And during the first, the first weeks of access, we did several scans uh, multiple times per day and during multiple days where we measured the number of range visits per individual. So we could know how, how the, the range use of each individual. So we use binoculars to, to, to spot the different individuals outside. So the first axis in the first experience, our objective was to determine if the, the use of the range by chickens can be considered as a personality trait, so stable over time and situation, and if it, it can be linked, linked to other behaviors. So um, here are the, the other types of behaviors that we, we, we followed during, during the experience, for example, foraging, locomotion, rest, and eat or drink. So um, for the methodology, we divided the rearing period in, in three different um, phases or dif three different um, where, yes, uh, two different periods. So we have, we, we have the before range access, then the animals will have the range access by 35, 36 days of age. Then we divided uh, the, the, range, uh, the range access in early range access, the first, the first weeks of range access, and then late range access when um, very close to the end of the rearing period. So during this, this time, we used the, the focal method. We spent time with following different individuals and we recorded the time spent expressing different behaviors. So during this, during this uh, time, we, we aim it to measure the, the stability over time of the different behaviors. And we also used, we also used the same methodology in two flocks during the spring and during the fall to see whether the, the, the stability, this, pro, this possible stability occurs in different situations. So um, our, first, our first questions were, uh, is range use stable over time? And are other behaviors stable over time? We did multiple correlations. I will spare you from to showing multiple figures. But what we, we did uh, see is that, yes, range use is, is um, stable over time from the early and the late range access, the individuals that do more range visits in, during the early period of range access do more visits during the late um, period. The behavior that was, that showed the more, um, that was the, the more stable behavior was foraging. So in this can be seen in all three periods. So when individuals that forage, forages a lot before the range uh, before the range axis, they will forage a lot during the early and the late uh, range axis. So it is, um, this is even more interesting because we found the same results for the two seasons. So uh, during spring and, and fall, we, we, saw, we, we could see this stability in these different situations. So our second question was about, uh, is range use linked to other behaviors? And once again, the only behavior that showed the most uh, link to range use, a, a positive link and a, a significant and positive link with range use was foraging. So um, the animal that foraged a lot before and during, during the all three periods that we followed the animals, the animals that forage a lot will use the range, uh, use, will use the range more. And this for the two, also two different seasons. So can we talk about uh, personality in foreign chickens? My results uh, suggest that yes, because we have two different behaviors, two different exploratory behaviors that are stable over time, and these behaviors correlate positively between, between one another, with one another. So we have um, a more interesting, in a more interesting manner, we have this foraging that um, 
before the range use that can be used as a predictive behavior of the future range use. So uh, answering our, our question, why the chick did the chicken cross the road or the range? Because it is, uh, it, it is, it is an explorer. So uh, just before um, going into more detail about our individual tests, um, once one slide more about methodology for the for the following tests, we selected individuals at the, the very uh, at the extremes. So we selected low ranges individuals that do few visits to the range, and we selected high ranges uh, individuals that do uh, more visits to the range based on the on the scans that we did uh, in the first week of, of range access. So just um, before going into a more cognitive part, we tested, we were very interested in this, in this uh, foraging behavior. So we tested this in an individual test, individual situation. That is no, it's a test that is known as contra-free load. So um, we tested the, the individuals in this um, rectangular arena. So individuals initially had access to one, only one side per, per time. So um, to, in, in one side, they have three worms, so they have easy access to the worms. And the other side, individuals will face a, will have the worms uh, mixed it to a foreign substrate such as straw. And uh, this, uh, therefore, the, the access to the to the worms were more difficult. So this was the conditioning phase. Individuals were 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 exposed to these two situations multiple times, and then we we go to the, the test phase where individuals will have access to, to the whole arena. They can go to, to they can visit both sides when, when whenever they want, and we measure the time individuals spent on it on each uh, on each side. So based on the on the time spent on each side, we created a preference index that went from minus one, so individuals prefer the, the easy access of food, um, and to one, that individuals prefer to have access to the difficult uh, food. Our result shows that um, compare, com comparing low ranges and high ranges, that low ranges will have a, ne a, a negative uh, preference index, so they will prefer the easy access, which potentially explains why they, they stay at the barn, because the barn is the place where the, the, the free food is. And our high rangers, they, they have a, a positive preference index, meaning that they prefer to have difficult access to food, that's, which may explain why they prefer to go out and spend some time foraging. Okay, so this give us another answer to our question, so why did the Chicken cross the world because it is it is an explorer and because it wants to work for its food. Okay, so now we are going to to the second part of this presentation about range use and cognition. So as I mentioned, uh, exploratory exploratory behavior can influence cognition, and then we 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 saw the 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 free range, free range system as a good way to to understand how range uses linked to cognition. So this, the object, objective of this part is to understand if the range use can be linked to specific, specific cognitive ability, abilities. And as I mentioned, the, um, there, the, there are differences whether the task we are, we are submitting the animals were, were simple, or com simple or complex. So basically we try to do, uh, to submit the individuals to this uh, simple or complex task. So um, in a first uh, test, we focus on spatial and non-spatial memory. Because, why? Because animals navigate their environmental, their environmental, the environment rely on different sources of, of information. They can use distal cues, that is cues that are far from the goal. When they use they use distal cues, they need to make a relationship between these different cues to create a sort of, sort of a, major, a spatial map. So it is when using distal cues, it is considered to be a, a, a compass type of task. And however, they can, can they can also rely on local cues that are cues near the goal. 
this um, this type of, of cues are used used mainly in stimulus um, response. Um, there is a stimulus response association which makes this the, the use of these cues more is simple compared to the use of distal cues. So um, we use this type of arena, a squared arena with seven seven black cups and one um, one white cup. The animals can uh, therefore rely on two on two types of memories. They can they could rely on their spatial memory in the partners around the the arena walls and on their surrounding curtain curtain, and they can also rely on the non spatial memory the the color of the cup which is white. So during a learning phase, this cup was always um, baited with uh, three mealworms, and the individuals uh, underwent this, this learning phase uh, three trials per day uh, during nine days. So here's an, uh, as an example of the um, of the learning phase. Individuals, the individuals must be very close to the to the cups to to see whether it contains uh, mealworms or not. We can see that there is the the white cup in the in the upper side of the of the video, and then the uh, individual reaches the the correct cup, the correct white cup. So um, after um, on the after the the learning period. We tested individuals in two different tests. So on test one, probe test one, were aimed to measure the, the spatial memory, so there was no local cue. Chickens uh, must use their spatial memory based on the cues on the wall to reach the target cup. And then we did a probe test two, where the local cue changed to a new location, to a new position, and chickens could use either the non-spatial memory and follow the local queue, follow the, the white cup, or its spatial memory and come back to its to the previous position based on distal cues. Um, here we measured, during this task, we measured the number of visits before reaching the target cup and the latency to visit the target cup. So, um, now, uh, the results for spatial memory, as I mentioned, during the two tests, individual could um, use their spatial memory. So we combined the, result, the results, the spatial responses from, from the individuals tested. And what we saw is that when requesting spatial memory to solve the task, low rangers performed better than, than, than high rangers. They took less time to read the spatial position of the target cup and made fewer visits before reaching it. However, when testing non-spatial memory, when uh, the white cup changed uh, its position, we did not find any differences between high rangers and low rangers. Animals reached the white cup uh, very quickly, uh, very quickly, and made very few visits before, range it, before reaching it. So we have another question, another, another answer for our question. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because it's an explorer because it wants to work for its food, because it has a poor spatial memory. So, um, so far we saw that when, when the task is simple, we, did not find, we, did not, we cannot find any difference between our, our high ranges and low ranges. However, when the task is complex, such as spatial memory, we can find some differences. So we, we decided to confirm these this results as with a new, a new task, a new complex task, to test um, differences, whether there, there is differences linked to, to different cognitive flexibility abilities between our chickens. So for that, we used a, uh, this, the cylinder task, the transparent cylinder task, where the, there is a, a food reward inside a this, this cylinder, and this cylinder is open on its sides. The individuals must learn that they cannot reach directly and touching the, the, the walls of the cylinder. They must do a detour to, to reach the, the, the food reward. This, this type of, of task were, 
was done in multiple species and is now to measure uh, cognitive flexibility. So another video, I hope it works. So um, here we have the training phase where individuals face a, a opaque cylinder. So they must learn two things that the first one is that there is food inside the cylinder and the second one is that they can reach the, 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 the food by either side of the open cylinder. So after going through the, the, the learning phase, individuals will then face a, a transparent cylinder. And here I show you the first, the first trial is a, a inaccurate trial. Individuals will, the individual will pack the, the walls of the, the cylinder. So we consider that as an inaccurate trial. And then for the accurate trial, the individuals, um, the individual will, will do the detour as requested to reach the, the food. So when individuals uh, did the test, we, we did 10 trials as, as many scientific papers did. So um, for the results of, of this task, what we saw is that if we only look at the average, the free range chicken in average, if we don't consider the, um, the individual differences, our individuals will have 30% 30, 30 of, of correct, of accurate responses. However, when we consider the, the individual differences based on range use, we can see that low rangers have a, a higher, um, are more accurate with 40% of correct trials. We can also see that um, if we, if we, we separate the first five and the last five trials, um, there is an uh, there is, is an improvement in the accuracy for low ranges. However, when we see the results for high ranges, high ranges were very um, low in accuracy with only f um, 45, uh, no, 25, sorry, 25 um, percent of accuracy, and they don't show um, they don't show an improvement over time. So when we see uh, the performance of different species, um, we can see it in multiple ways, whether we consider or not the individual differences. For example, our, our average chicken and our high range chickens were in the very, they were very poor, they had very poor performance compared to other, other species. However, if we consider the performance of low rangers, they have, uh, improved performance and they can be considered to, uh, to, to these species that are to parakeets and etc. So they have a new, uh, they have a totally new rank, a new, uh, if we consider these differences. So it's very interesting to, to consider the, the differences and see uh, how they perform rather than, con than considering only the average. So we have another, another answer to our question, why did the chicken cross the road? Because it is an explorer, because it wants to work for its food, because it has a poor spatial memory and because it's not very flexible. So in summary, uh, what we saw is that uh, the range use, uh, our res my, my results suggest that range use can be a part of a personality trait uh, the, this, this behavior is, is linked to foraging, this behavior is stable, and foraging is also stable, so we have these two, two behavior, two exploratory behaviors that uh, links uh, with one another. So we have a exploratory trait in chickens, and this exploratory trait is linked to cognitive abilities, and we, we will have different uh, reactions of our, our groups, uh, whether the, the task is simple or complex. For example, during non-spatial memory, we did not find any differences between individuals. However, when the task is more complex, such as spatial memory and cognitive flexibility with the, with the transparent cylinder, we did find differences. So uh, for future research, so as I mentioned, um, we, we, we suggest that, our, our data suggests that there is um, a exploratory trait in chickens. 
I did not have enough time to present all the results, but we also studied sociability. However, sociability was, um, the, 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 there were very con contradictory results between different ages and between, between different seasons. Sometimes it was, there was a positive link with range you use, sometimes it was negative, there were negative links. So we should study this, this trait further to understand how sociability will influence French use. But there's also other personality traits in the scientific literature, such as activity, boldness, aggressivity, that we could not, uh, we could not confirm the existence of these traits in chickens. However, it, it, it does not mean that they didn't exist. They, they don't exist. It does not mean they don't exist. Maybe it's only because our our measures, our tests were not were not uh, able to 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 find um, this trait in chickens. So we we think it's interesting to continue studying these different traits beyond exploration. Um, for cognition, we think that as we found uh, these different um, Results for for sociability, it would be interesting to study social cognition because right now the most of the studies uh, so far were more focused on uh, physical cognition, how individuals perceive the, the 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 space and things like that. So how individuals learn with one another with is another is another field of research that it's currently on an accord so it it will be very very interesting to to study social cognition in, in, in this type of chickens so as i take home message um i finish with this phrase so free range chickens may have different personalities and may differ in the, their cognitive processes um, and both personality and cognition are linked at linked to the way they explore the range since animal welfare relates to the individual perception of its situation, this knowledge is essential to identify the characteristics that affect range use. And ultimately, these results may help to develop effective ways to stimulate birds to go out and benefit uh, from the advantages that range use offers. So thank you very much for your, your time and listening to me. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Vito, for this. Thanks, Vito, for this awesome presentation. Uh, this is quite a, a a very interesting set of different paradigms and tests that you're using to assess behavior and cognition in chicken. Mm. Really impressive work. Uh, we are open for questions now in the chat, and while we're waiting for for the first questions, um, I have one or two. Uh, myself. Okay. Uh, the first one, um, if I remember correctly from the slide, the in the spatial memory task, the latency for both groups was relatively high compared to, yeah, compared to the latency in the non-spatial task. So they were quite fast. Both were quite fast in the non-spatial memory task, and and. Although there was a difference for the high ranges compared to the low ranges in the spatial memory task, mm -hmm. latency times were in general higher. So my, my thinking was that maybe, I mean, high ranges are, ought to be explorers. So maybe this difference is not best explained or cannot just explain by differences in the spatial memory capacity, but maybe because they, the high ranges might simply explore the arena more and thus end up to a certain degree with a higher latency without having impaired spatial memory itself? Um, I, I don't think so because um, I did not mention it here, but we did a, a habituation phase where all the cups were, were baited. And uh, during this period, there were no differences in, in the time to visit all cups. So I don't think there's a differences in latency to so it's, it, uh, uh, which, which is very interesting in our work is that we find uh, differences only when do the, t the, the tests. So during the period of learning, during the period of habituation, there's no differences between, um, 
there's no difference between our, our individuals. So, yeah, I, 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 I would I would go that there is a really difference in, in spatial memory. I would go for it. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, uh, great stuff that you control for, for for alternative explanations beforehand. That's awesome. So we have a question. We have several big questions right now in the chat. Um, Johanna is asking, do other species have these ranges in performance with a cylinder test as well? Or is the range in performance especially high in chickens? Do other species have these ranges in performance? Um, first question, I don't know right now if there, there were studies focusing on individual differences. Mostly of the studies consider the average of, of the of the individuals. Uh, there's a study of on fish that study males and females, um, but I don't remember the results. My must, but right now, so far, most studies focus on on the average. They don't consider the the differences between individuals. Um, or is the range in performance especially high in chickens? Um, I didn't. I do not understand the question. I think she refers to this difference between high and low uh, ranges uh, in terms of their performance in the task. Whether the individual differences or group differences you can find in other other species show such a high variability between individuals of one species as well. Um, I don't know because the the studies don't don't show the they don't show the Usually they don't show the variability; they they only show the average. So I cannot really answer this this question. However, what I should mention here is that for some individuals, we reach it to test them uh, for longer. So usually we test in, in the in the papers I, I read. We test uh, for ten trials. However, we test some individuals. I we cannot test all individuals, but we test some of them until uh, 20 trials. And what we saw is that uh, when we test until 20 trials, there's no more differences. High rangers and low rangers, the differences, I think the differences is, is, is mainly in the first periods. I think um, low rangers, um, they, they understand the, the, the test quickly. Yeah, so it should, uh, should there, there is still room for, for better understanding this, this phenomenon. Cool, thanks. So Katarina is asking, uh, thank you for the nice presentation, very interesting results. You tested female chickens, right? Do you think you would get the same results if you test male chickens? Uh, no, 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 I, I tested only male chickens. We did not test female chickens because we did not want to, the tests are very, very time consuming. We, we did not have the time to add another variable. However, what we do know is that um, in some cases, uh, I just um, present an example uh, in the, the first slide is that um, females are more fearful. So potentially I think that if they, for some cases fearful animals have, they pay more attention to the environment, they, they are. So basically I would expect that if you compare males and females, um, I would expect that um, females would do better in this test. However, it's it's up to, to testing right now. Okay, thank you. So Rachel has another question regarding the detour task. Why do you consider that it is an incorrect trial in the very first trials with the transparent cylinder when an individual pecks at the cylinder? It may be it's a new situation uh, why not, or I think the, she's referring to the chicken, why not test to peck on it first? Maybe individuals which don't do it are less flexible because they just apply what they learned. Um, um, we, we expose the chickens to transparency before, I, I did not have the time to mention this, but we expose it, um, chickens to transparency uh, before, before the tests. So um, there was no there was there, there was no new situation for them in this case I think um, 
I think the, the, the behavior of packing is just an, is, is considered as an impulsivity. Individuals want, they, they, in most cases, they don't want to explore. They want just to, to take the, the, the food reward. So um, I would, um, when, when, when you test this, we test cognitive flexibility, but also impulsivity. So the individual during the training phase, they already know what behavior they need to do to, uh, to perform well. So basically, I would, I, of course, I would expect, expect in the first trials for they to, to do some inaccurate trials. However, um, over time, they, they should um, somehow learn the task. And that we, we see in, in low rangers, but not in high rangers. Thank you, Rito. Uh, there's no other questions, but maybe people are typing in a few more. Uh, I have I have a last one myself, uh, which refers to how you choose the your test subjects, basically. Um, if I remember correctly, you basically choose the the both extremes, so the minimum yeah. and maximum of range use. Yeah. Um, could you explain a little bit what was the rationale excluding all individuals in the middle? Because including those would first increase your sample size, plus you would be able to see whether these differences that you spotted in terms of spatial memory and behavioral inhibition, whether this reflects a continuum or whether the individuals located in the middle in terms of the range use might act completely random or indifferent or completely different than the extremes, for example. So could you explain a bit more why you opted to choose the extremes in this continuum here? Um, I think it's more um, maybe because it's more easier to find differences in the extremes. Um, we selected it um, initially we selected based on the based on the time we ha we have we selected we 20 individuals for example 20 low 20 low rangers and 20 high rangers but after a, a, a time of reflection we we decided to go for the quartiles so uh, the first quartile and the fourth quartile so we said so we we selected the, the individuals based on that so um, I think it, it would be interesting to select individuals from the middle to know whether they have a intermediate performance. However, this, as I mentioned, these this, this cognitive tasks are very timing consuming and we decided to focus on, on, on the extremes to, because it's, it's um, what we see in the, in the scientific literature in some cases. So we, 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 we we thought that maybe we, we would find easily some differences in these cases. Not that the individuals in the middle, they are still interesting, but um, it's, it's up to, to, to other research to, to, do, to study these individuals. Yeah, I hope thanks. that I, I answered your question. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I was just curious whether there was any other rationale except for, for time and resources on this. But uh, this makes completely sense but to just test the extremes to see whether there are differences between both extremes. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a last question from, from Berta, mm -hmm. which is only slightly related to your presentation. <laughs> uh, Vitor, your slides are great. Simple, clear, <laughs> illustrative. Am I right in thinking that you're about to defend your thesis or has it already happened? In any case, the presentation is very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, I'm going to defend my thesis in exactly 18 days. So it was a good experience in talking to you. So I could, I could feel whether I can answer the questions from the, from the jury and all that. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. I guess we are all crossing fingers for uh, the November 20th uh, for your for defense. <laughs> uh, there, there are no more questions right now, so I think we can close for today. Okay. Uh, I just want to uh, thank again Vito for presenting today. This was an awesome talk uh, and a really nice test design uh, to, to investigate differences or how differences in behavior are linked to differences in cognition as well. Uh, in two weeks, we will have Katarina Bokova, uh, which will talk about the effect of early social environment on day recall development. So hopefully uh, we will see a lot of you 
uh, during this webinar as well.